Every day, thousands of young Americans enlist in the armed forces. Some are stationed overseas in dangerous places like Iraq. Others are stationed here at home. Three of those soldiers spent some time with family in Penfield while on leave from the Army over the holidays. Specialist Greg Metcalf, 21, his sister, Specialist Jenny Bester, 19, and her husband, Chris Bester, 24, all came home for the holidays. For Jenny and Greg's mother, Bobby Metcalf, having two of her eight children serving in the military has been a source of great pride, as well as some worry. For Jenny, knowing her husband could be called for a third tour of duty in Iraq is cause for stress. A strong sense of patriotism and getting involved in efforts to support the troops from her home in Penfield helps Bobby Metcalf through the tough times. And for the troops like Chris Fester, support from back home, even at a time when the American public is not in support of the war in Iraq, means the world. The following is a first-hand account of war and serving in the Army from Chris Bester, a sergeant who has served two tours in Iraq, and the story of Jenny Bester, a military wife who can't help but worry. It's interesting. It's definitely an interesting job. I mean, uh, sometimes the living conditions aren't that great. Sometimes they're, they're all right. Like at the beginning of the war in 2003, you're living in a tent with no air conditioning. It's really hot. You probably never get a shower. But uh, they've improved a lot since then, but there's still some areas that are like that over there, you know. You may not have to spend a whole lot of time over there unless you're uh, like infantry or something like that. Sometimes they have pretty rough. But uh, other than that, the conditions are pretty nice out there. you got uh, trailers, air-conditioned trailers now, and they're doing a, a really good job trying to uh, protect all the soldiers over there. They're spending a lot of money on uh, waste purchases, such as uh, like barriers, concrete barriers, to get mortar rounds from doing a lot of damage to the come in the camp and uh, body armor. The body armor is great. You know, it could use some improvement, but uh, it's just better than nothing. And it definitely helps. It save a lot of lives out there. How do people deal with the, the dangers and the knowing that, you know, the body armor and barriers are there? Well, that's just part of the job, you know. We know the, um, we know the risk of it. and it, It's kind of hard at times, you know, you eventually get into a, a mindset where it doesn't really bother you anymore. You know, you spend any amount of time over there, you're going to see and hear more because it is warm. You know, even if you stay on the base a lot, like I did, you know, you're going to have more rounds coming in. You're going to hear fire bombs going off at gates and in the city. Mm -hmm. So you're going to hear and see stuff like that. You just kind of get used to it. Mm -hmm. How about the actual progress of, you know, the mission? Um, as far as the mission goes, uh, I think we've made a lot of progress. You know, it doesn't really show, and, um, but we have made a lot of progress. I've seen firsthand, you know, some of the good things that are going on out there. And, and uh, every soldier out there is busy, you know, almost 24 hours a day. There's something going on, and they're working to uh, in this war and get it over and get everybody home. Mm -hmm. Is it, uh, do you get to interact with the citizens at all? Yeah, every once in a while you do. Depending on your job, you may interact with them more or less, but it's getting that ability. You can interact with them either through interpreters coming in through the base or or base workers, you know, if you hire some of the Iraqis to come in and, and do some of the work on base, well, you end up interacting with them at some point in time while you're over there. And when you come home, do you have to deal with questions with people about, like, I'm asking? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes I feel like the, the media gets it wrong sometimes, and um, there's a lot of good stuff going on in Iraq. You know, there's there's a lot of children out there that are actually getting school now, having an opportunity education. And uh, it's, it's good to drive down the road and sometimes you'll see Iraqis run up to the side of the road with, with flags, you know, thinking us and waving us and waving around American flags, you know. There's a lot of them out there that love us and I say it's about that other 10% that really don't want us there. And that's kind of understandable too, you know, we're, we're kind of unwelcome guests there. You know, they didn't ask us to come and help them. And, uh, I also feel we're kind of too far along, we need to pull out now. And uh, it's going to take some time, you know, there's, there's no doubt in this, this war is going to be all and it's going to take some time. But that's what we've made ourselves to the moon. I stand behind our president. And um, what, what have you gotten out of it? And will you will you be on that? Uh, I'm, I don't think I'm going to re-enlist. Just because uh, now that I'm married, it's, it's very difficult to do the long deployments. I don't mind doing them. It's just being married, I would much rather spend time with my family. And uh, I think I'm going to get out and go to college. How did you guys meet exactly? Um, we were at a barbecue uh -huh. that his unit was having. We both just got in there that week. Uh, we met up at the barbecue and started dating then. Well, yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Where'd you. Where were you married? Uh, in the courthouse in Oklahoma. And what's your status? Um, um about to get out. You know, next month, so. What's it like being away from having him being away? It's hard. 
There's a lot of long, lonely nights, but you get through it. There's nothing you can do about it. So, how do you deal with the, you know, the dangers that he faces, knowing he faces them? Try not to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Is it hard being as knowing that you knowing what you know? Mm -hmm. And there's sometimes like when I'll be on the phone with him, and I'll hear the mortars coming in, and he has to hang up, and that's hard. Cause I don't know when he can call back. But Jenny, what have you gotten out of it? I'm growing up a lot. When I went in, I was a really immature, kind of knew the world, but I didn't. And I feel like I'm more of an adult now. Even at 19, when most kids are getting out, just getting out of high school. I've done a lot of stuff.